I don't wish to alarm you, but your DNA is slowly falling apart. As we've seen a few episodes ago, to the best of our knowledge, aging is the result of nine processes of damage accumulation that are known in the scientific literature as the hallmarks of aging. Four of them, the primary hallmarks, are believed to be what actually starts pushing your health downhill. The remaining hallmarks seem to follow directly or indirectly from the action of the primary ones. The big boss of the primary hallmarks is arguably genomic instability which ultimately affects your body's ability to produce the proteins it needs. Proteins are ridiculously important. They're used for nearly any function of your body you can think of. They make up the scaffolding keeping your cells together, they facilitate chemical reactions, and they even rely messages from cell to cell. The instructions to make proteins are contained in your genome, the collection of all your genes. Each gene is made up of a number of molecules strung together called nucleotides. And even though there are only four different types of nucleotides, different nucleotide sequences of different length essentially encode the entire blueprint of your body. For this reason, your cells make a pretty big deal of genome safety. Even a single damaged gene could spell disaster. And as they rather be safe than sorry, cells store your genome inside the nucleus, which you can think of as a sort of microscopic bomb shelter for genes. If you've got genes to keep safe, the nucleus is a pretty good place. But that's not the only place in your body that contains genome. For reasons that we're going to go into in another video, the mitochondria inside your cells have their own genome which contains the instructions to build proteins that mitochondria need to carry out the family business, which is producing energy for the cell. You can't be too careful when there are genes to protect. So both cells and mitochondria have repair mechanisms in place to fix their genomes if they get damaged. But despite all these efforts to keep the genome stable, sometimes damage occurs anyway. And that's why genomic instability is even a thing. Genomic instability is basically the tendency of both nuclear and mitochondrial DNA sequences to accumulate damage over time, which is a recipe for disaster and for evolution. Because damage can lead to genetic mutations, which is science sees for the instructions that tell cells and ultimately your body how they're supposed to function get scrambled. Mutations can lead to the production of broken proteins and they can cause the cell to malfunction or to check out ahead of schedule. Worse still, they can even make the cells flip out entirely and become cancerous. There are different kinds of mutations that can affect the genomes of your cells and your mitochondria. Think of a DNA sequence as a pearl necklace, where each pearl is a nucleotide. You can alter the necklace by adding extra pearls or by losing some. You can put a pearl in the wrong place or you can move entire strings of subsequent pearls to a different place or remove them all together. Different things can alter the genome. For example, viruses infiltrating a cell can change its genome by inserting fragments of their own DNA and exposure to UV light and other kinds of radiation can inflict damage to the DNA. Additionally, the environment where the DNA is stored doesn't contain just the DNA. It's crowded with all sorts of other chemicals floating around that they can accidentally harm it as they pass by. Mutations can also occur simply as a side effect of the reproduction of cells or mitochondria. When they reproduce, they make a copy of their genetic material, and even though the copying machinery they use is extremely accurate, it's not completely error-proof. And occasionally, it can place a nucleotide in the wrong place, creating a slightly different copy of the original gene. Mitochondria are especially unlucky in the mutation lottery because they don't have a nucleus to store their DNA, which is therefore more exposed to potential sources of harm, which there's no shortage of because the inside of mitochondria is highly oxidative, that is, is full of molecules that can't wait to snatch electrons from just any other molecule around which ends up causing damage. To top it off, the DNA repair machinery of mitochondria is nowhere near as good as the machinery inside the cell nucleus. As they say, when it rains, it pours. And mitochondria are kind of stuck in a rainstorm with an umbrella full of holes. Now, how does any of this relate to aging? 
After all, mutations can happen essentially at any point in time, not just at later ages. Well, this is exactly the point. Mutations are probabilistic events. So if you live longer, more mutations are likely to happen. In addition to that, DNA repair mechanisms become less effective with age, so more damage is likely to slip through the cracks in old age. When you're young, you haven't accumulated that many mutations yet, and just a few mutated cells here and there don't make much of a difference. By the time you're old, mutations might have piled up enough to matter. For instance, if they caused enough cells within a tissue to malfunction, the functioning of the whole tissue might be affected. A perfect example of this is mutations to stem cells that compromise their ability to replenish bodily tissues. But we have plenty of time to discuss more about stem cells in later episodes. There's plenty of evidence that mitochondrial DNA damage might be involved in aging too. For example, mice with impaired DNA polymerase gamma, a molecule taking care of repairing mitochondrial DNA damage, seem to show signs of premature aging and live shorter lives. And in humans, mitochondrial DNA mutations appear to cause multi-system disorders that resemble aging. Progeroid syndromes, rare medical conditions that cause a sort of premature aging in patients, support the idea that DNA damage may play a role in aging. Werner syndrome, Bloom syndrome, Xeroderma pigmentosum, and a bunch of other conditions with unpronounceable names are all an example of this, as they seem to be the result of the accumulation of DNA damage. Predictably, different kinds of DNA damage call for different repair approaches. When only one of the two DNA strands is damaged, repair is easier. In some lucky cases, cells are able to reverse a specific kind of damage by replacing a single nitrogenous base, the part of the nucleotide that makes it different from the others. In other cases, entire segments of one strand may be damaged and need to be replaced with new ones created using the other strand as a template. When both DNA strands are damaged, things are more complicated, because neither strand can be used as a template to repair the other, and so the repair process, which deserves an episode on its own right, is more error-prone and more likely to insert mutations in the repaired strand. DNA repair mechanisms may be not perfect and become even less efficient with age, but is there anything that we can do to improve them? Maybe. Interesting studies have shown that a molecule called nicotinamide mononucleotide, or NMN, seems to promote and sustain the DNA repair mechanisms. When they administered NMN to old mice, scientists observed a reduced DNA damage rate compared to the non-treated controls. This strongly suggests that NMN might hold great therapeutic potential for the prevention of age-related symptoms caused by genomic instability. But before you rush to your doctor and ask to have a few NMN shots prescribed, keep in mind that these results were found in animal models. And while there are human trials going on, it might take a while to see if these results will translate to people. Still, NMN and its mechanism of action are worth exploring. And we will certainly do so in separate videos. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Extend and special thanks to our supporters, the lifespan heroes who help make the show and everything else that Leaf does possible. If you'd like to help our helpers help us, you can do so by becoming a lifespan hero yourself. And if you'd like to learn more about the science of aging and rejuvenation, don't forget to go to youtube.com slash lifespan.io and subscribe. They make up the scaffolding pro. They produce makeup, makeup. You can alter the necklace by adding extra pearls or by or by losing some. You can alter the the dead. Mutations can also when they reproduce, they make a copy of their gene. Mitochondria are especially unlucky in the nucleus, uh, which is therefore more exposed to protein. To top it off, the DNA repair mechanisms uh, are all an example of this, as they seem to be.
scientists observed a reduced DNA damage rate. Raged. A DNA damage rage. Ah! <laughs>